This is Will Buchanan reporting for the Walk for Liberty. It's day 51, June 3rd, 2008. I'm appreciative to the farmers for these farm roads that parallel the main road. They're a heck of a lot nicer to walk on than the main road with the traffic whizzing by you. I guess those aren't very necessary right now. Nothing beats a deer, except for manual labor. I think this is some of the worst rain we've had. Except for possibly a couple days in that first mountain pass we crossed in Oregon a couple weeks into the Walk for Liberty when it was also cold and snowy. Maybe all this rain is why Brooke decided not to join me today. I never realized that these irrigation machines went on an arc through the fields. Because the irrigation robot rotates around in a circle, pivoting around the center here. The parts as you move out toward the circumference of the circle have to move faster than the interior parts. That's why the parts on the outside are spraying like crazy. But the parts near the center are barely spraying because they're also barely moving. We finally reached a point that I've been dreading for quite a while on the Walk for Liberty. We're right at the edge of not being able to use our cell phones for internet connectivity. Since deciding to take the northern route through the mountains in Idaho, I knew there would be at least a couple points where we wouldn't be able to use our cell phones to access the internet. One from Kennewick to Lewiston in eastern Washington, and the other through most of the territory we'll be passing through in Idaho. And right now, we're about two or three days east of Kennewick in eastern Washington. I was getting suspicious when last night and this morning, the internet connection on my cell phone kept intermittently dropping. Fortunately, it stayed up continuously long enough for me to upload a video. However, I'm already walking east of our campsite, and indeed, when I tried to access the internet on my cell phone just now, it wouldn't connect. And at some points, there aren't any campgrounds with Wi-Fi either. So that will leave us with having to find internet cafes, which might be difficult to come by out in the middle of nowhere. Or with war driving, which is basically finding an unsecured wireless internet connection so you can use it for a few minutes. And in the worst case, I might not be able to post any videos for a day or two until we find an internet connection. It doesn't have to be that way, though. I had read a story a while back about some cell phone companies that wanted to blanket much of the rural areas of the country with weather-style balloons. The balloons would float high above those areas and would provide service to places that don't have any, or at least very good, coverage. They wanted to do this because it would be cheaper than building expensive towers in places that don't have very much population. However, as is often the case, the government stepped in. I don't remember the exact details now, but presumably it was either the FAA or the FCC or both who stepped in and said that they weren't allowed to fly those weather balloons. Apparently it's okay for the government, or for people they give permission to, to fly weather balloons, but not for cell phone companies. If that technology had already been implemented today, it might not even be an issue where we walked, because we could have complete coverage. That's not the only example, though, of the government slowing down progress in cell phone technology. I've heard that back in the 60s, AT&T was ready to come out with a type of cell phone, but that the government wouldn't let them. I wonder how much more advanced cell phone technology would be today if the government wasn't there to put the brakes on it. Or indeed, I wonder how much more advanced the rest of the industries would be if the government weren't there to slow their progress. My shin's really bothering me right now, and has been getting progressively worse from about half the walk on. So, in an effort not to injure it, I'm going to stop a bit early for the day. I walked 8.37 miles. 
And here's my current GPS position. Since getting here, Yuka's been making such delicious dinners for us. Tonight she's making Yuka onion soup, which is not French onion because Brooke and I don't eat chicken broth. This is Will Buchanan for blog.walkforliberty.com, signing off.